And hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Coming to you, as always, from deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. My name is John Mark Tolley, and joining me, as always, is Will, a.k.a. Darth Tuba. How are you today, Will? I'm doing well. Bright suns, everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. Uh, did have a little bit of a weather issue that... Uh, you, John, Mark, and I were just discussing, and uh, we had up here in the East Coast, we had some pretty nasty rain, about eight to twelve inches in parts. So there was flooding, and yes, there was flooding in the Star Wars uh, basement, but nothing too serious, and most of it was up above the water level. So well, all is good. Yeah. You can check out my Darth Tuba video today. I did did open up some stuff that did get bad, damaged. So. You can check that out on my on my page. But otherwise, wow. everything is good. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here. And as always, before we get started, just want to let everyone remind everyone that War of the Stars is part of the Red 5 Network. Go to red5network.com for more information. We are Red 5. And I just lost Will. So... While we're waiting for, oh, there he is. Sorry about that. <laughs> I dropped that. <up. laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, go to red5network.com for more information on all the shows on the Red 5 Network. And remember, we are Red 5. So, uh, today we are going to be looking at cartoons. Yay! Wait, let me get my bowl of cereal and my. That's right. That's right. <laughs> my, we're going to be. Coco Pup Puffs and my <laughs> Lucky Charms. I know, really. <laughs> um, we're going to be looking at the history of the animated series and animated shorts within the Star Wars universe. And uh, all the way from the infamous holiday special. One that I am, I am one of the few that actually enjoys the holiday special. Yes, I said it. Don't judge. <laughs> now, what I what I I don't enjoy every minute of it, but there are things I've always been I've been brought up on variety shows when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and uh, and and I enjoyed um, see, and I also loved things like the Honeymooners, and the Carol Burnett Show, and the Golden Girls, and you you have three actors that were involved with those those three things. You had Art Carney, B. Arthur, you have. Um, uh, Harvey Corman and I just love those comedians so and actors so to have them in my Star Wars universe was always a fun thing so oh. I, I very much enjoyed it but of course what is universally kind of loved by most if and even if the entire special is hated is the short cartoon that was what that was uh, created by a company I believe called Nirvana Hmm. And yes, and it was um, a short, what about eight minutes uh, a short that featured all the voice cast, the voice act, the actors, you know, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, and playing all the main characters, as well as the introduction of Boba Fett. Yes. Um, you know, obviously this is not considered canon, although it is now on Disney Plus. You can watch just the cartoon. They've They've said it. I don't know if you've seen it, but that's um, kind of nice because it's a nice, clean copy of the cartoon. So, because right now the only way you can watch the holiday special is through somebody in Detroit. I think uh, made a, a boot, like a had a Betamax or a VCR video recorder and recorded a, a pretty clean copy, and that's the only thing floating around YouTube right now or mm. on a bootleg thing. So, but now thanks to Disney Plus, we have that, and and the. Um, Cartoon was it, it? It's a simple little story. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the the, the talisman, which is this uh, device, this uh, kind of like the MacGuffin. They're going after this, and but apparently, it turns out that the uh, the talisman makes people makes human humanoids fall asleep or something, and and the only way they die unless you have to you have to string them up upside down so all the blood rushes to their heads so Chewie was involved with that and Boba Fett comes in and you think he's going to help and then it's a twist and he's not and everything mm. so it was it was a great introduction surrounding yeah. uh, a, a questionable and controversial special <laughs> definitely 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 yeah there there's um you know I've 
You know, I think that's something that we might want to do for our Christmas special is uh, do a watch through of the holiday special. Oh, I'm there. Kind of, I am there. Kind of react to it and <laughs> see, see. Uh, so, yeah, just, just, yeah, just have that's fun a plan. With it. I, yes. That's a plan. Yeah. I mean, you have to embrace. I mean, you have to. It's a product of its time. Mm. You have to embrace the weird. And I, and last week I mentioned how I give Disney, the company Disney, a lot of credit for uh, holding the Star Wars mantra uh, and and the banner and the torch for Star Wars when no one else was doing it from the from the mid '80s to the early '90s. Well, in the same vein, I hold uh, this Star Wars holiday special with holding the torch for Star Wars between those those infamous uh, that that third year that Star Wars was over and there was nothing you know everything was done there wasn't anything except the the anticipation for the empire strikes back so lucas wanted to have you know he basically begged his i believe the way the legend goes is that he begged the um the cast to come in and do this this story just to kind of keep it keep it keep it interesting you know to keep mm-hmm. people's interest in in star wars so and as yeah. it the cartoon was a was a shining beacon out of a otherwise you know, yeah, <laughs> kind of head scratcher of a special. So, but then it moves on. You know, then we go. Of course, we have our movies, and the movies coming. The rest of the movie, remaining movies, come and go. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then we, we come have Saturday morning, Saturday morning cartoons, and we have the droids and Ewoks Adventure Hour. That is awesome. That's, That's right. I'm the Adventures of C three PO. And. and Archie- I remember watching that for the first time. Now, I was a little bit older at this point, but the time yeah. 85, it was 85, right? I believe. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. When I was, um, when that had come out, I guess I was about 14. So I was just getting ready to go into high school mm-hmm. and, or just in high school. And uh, so, you know, my, my interests were waning and going into different things. And, but I did still watch it pretty faithfully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I just, it was, for me, it was just fun to, to find not just C3PO and R2D2. Or the Ewoks, but any I was more attached to droids than I was Ewoks. Yeah. But I enjoyed, you know, hearing the sound effects, the speeders, the laser bolts, anything that, and if I saw an A wing or I saw a Tie Fighter, I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Even though, you know, <laughs> nowadays you watch it, it's does it? What do you have you seen any of them recently? Does it hold I up? I have not watched. Any, I mean, just looking at the at the uh, pictures, you can tell. It's very much in that Saturday morning vein. I will uh, say, cartoon. The quality of the animation was far better than a lot of stuff that was going on. Again, mm-hmm. that same company, Nirvana, um, did the same company that did the holiday special did this. So you can see mm-hmm. a lot of similar beats, especially to the way they animated three PO and R two. But it was, um, it, you know, obviously you had to. It was the first time. That we had to kind of like wrap our heads around. Okay, that now we have the you know three PO and R two on different adventures with different people, and oh, there's a little. It has a, there's a bit. Sometimes you see Boba Fett. Sometimes you see Bounty Hunter IG eighty eight. But beyond, and I think an A wing fighter pilot. But but beyond that, it was you had all all new characters, all new adventures, and it seemed like they ran kind of um, like two or three episode arcs. And mm-hmm. then moved on. Um, years later, after the video, the, the only the, the droids ran for one season. Ewoks uh, ran for two seasons, mm-hmm. but the first and second were very different. Like they mm-hmm. they did a lot of stuff different to them. I didn't watch those as much. Did you watch Ewoks at all? No, no, yeah. I was never really a big Ewok fan, which yeah. is ir- ironic because Jedi. As I said before, Jedi is my favorite movie. It's but. funny when Jedi came out. I it's it's, my, it's one of my favorites as well, and I love the Ewoks. But when I watched them in this format, it was very obvious that they were they were you know skewing to a younger audience, certainly younger mm-hmm. than my age. Mm-hmm. And you can also see with the toys that were coming out that they made them yeah. look like the cartoon versions, not rather than the regular ones. So it was it was good, but it was apparently the first. What I've been told told is that the first season was far superior to the second season. Yeah. And then things changed. Now, later on, years later, like in the mid-90s, they released both of the Ewoks and, and the Droids cartoons, but on a video cassette. Not all of them, though. They kind of yeah. 
skewed a bunch of them together into like a movie for mm-hmm. each. So, and I got those and those were great. And then, um, and then after that, they did release, I think some of them on DVD, same idea. And then eventually you could find a lot of them on YouTube. But then now again, Disney plus has released all the episodes of droids and Ewoks. Mm. So, so it's, so you can catch up if you want. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you know, sad, you're, I did think it was better quality. Um, yeah. Then, then, then your tip. Well, maybe not all Saturday morning cartoons. It just there was a blockiness to animation back then. Yeah. That I I didn't uh, see as much when it came to droids and Ewoks. So. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but after that, there seemed to be kind of a uh, a lull in a dark period, but where you didn't have a lot of Star Wars, at least not on TV. Star Wars cartoons coming out after Droids and Ewoks went off the air. Um, I mean, I might be wrong, but maybe I just wasn't looking hard enough for. Well, let me see here. Um, when you were, yeah, you got to remember that Star Wars was waning. The popularity was waning. We got into the, as we call it, the dark times. And um, the, I'm just, I'm just getting my, I'm just checking one thing here. Uh, there we go. All uh, right. Let's see if I can uh, see if this opens up on me. Um, yeah, we got through the '90s. Um, you know, there wasn't much about Star Wars animation. Um, there was, of course, you know, the special editions. There was, if you, <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll make it an honorable mention. Well, let's talk about Episode One very briefly. F the Phantom Menace. I would call it an honorable mention because it had so many, so much digital effects <laughs> that some <laughs> argue that it could be considered an animated film. But I, I don't, uh, I don't think we can go quite that far and call it a full yeah. animated film. Yeah. But um, so. So then you get past that, and then you get into episode one, episode episode, well, episode one, and then episode two, yeah. And then we jump to Clone okay. Wars, and notice how I said Clone Wars, Clone Wars. as opposed not, to the Clone, not Wars. Clone Wars. And this yeah. is the Jenny Jenny Tartakovsky, yeah, uh, what they called micro series, which was a very yeah. unique thing at the time. I don't know how much mm-hmm. it's been done, but basically you had twelve three minute episodes yeah they're just very short now i've gone on record in the past now i don't know what your opinion of it i honestly was not a big fan of it um, um i i th- i and there's two there's two things i i didn't necessarily like the animation style i know people will go like well this is the same guy that did uh samurai, samurai jack, jack. Samurai Jack, and right. I wasn't a fan of Samurai Jack either. I'm just not a fan of that style of animation. And I thought it was too heavy for me personally. It was too heavy on the action. Because it's just action, action, action. Because obviously you have three minutes. Yeah. You have to be like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You know? And it not a not there wasn't a lot of character, character stuff, not a lot of um story really for, for me. You know, I personally liked, as we'll talk about later. The Clone Wars better than just Clone War. That that's me personally. That now I I kind of I'm kind of with you there. I mean I didn't at the time I I didn't miss an episode. I was like oh let's watch it let's see what it is. It's the first because remember at that time we weren't mm-hmm. thinking about we weren't thinking about Joys and Ewoks and we weren't thinking about the holiday special. We were thinking that this was the first time that they really jumped in and really tried a serious. Yeah. Um, cartoon and it, did, not, I mean, it not, did give us one little bit of something that i never was officially made canon um which is how um general grievous got his cough that i love that yes is the choking of his of his heart and i loved the whole um i did my my what i did like about the whole series was and again it's not considered canon but they they took that series, and I would believe there was two seasons of it, right? Mm-hmm. And they took that series, and the, the end. Now, the second time, the second season, they were like twelve-minute episodes, I think, yeah, or or five. Some they were longer, so it was a little mm-hmm. bit easier to to uh, the, the action wasn't quite so intense. They could develop a little bit, but the real cool thing about that one was that at the very last episode, you see the whole thing with Grievous kidnapping. Palpatine, Palpatine, yeah, and ending it so much to have the last scene be the panning up through the atmosphere and seeing all the all the 
separatist ships fighting all of the Republican ships, yes. as yeah. if it's going to connect right to opening the start of uh, episode three, mm-hmm. when we kind of switch the reverse angle out on that. So I thought that that was um, brilliant, and yeah. but it's, but I agree with you that I, I'm not a huge fan of the style, and I'm not a huge fan of the um, larger than lifeness that was going on, like Mace Windu taking out literally. Nine hundred thousand mm-hmm. battle droids with by just by going. Whoosh. Yeah, I I get why they were doing it, and I would even say from an explanation standpoint, if you needed it, you know, if you couldn't suspend your disbelief, let's forget, let's not forget the stuff. Forget the fact that this whole thing is made up. But um, the idea that these are legendary stories, so they're gonna have yes. that that bigger than life kind of thing to it. So definitely, definitely. Um can pull up a there they are yeah there they are yes. um and and it, it was nice uh, the one thing that that didn't connect of course was that um the clones all just spoke like english like american they didn't speak they didn't speak like tamara morrison they didn't have yeah. the bradley baker voicing it so um that kind of took me out of it a little bit but um but overall, no, I, I mean, it, I didn't mind it. You know, I didn't. I thought it was nice to have a little something different, and it was our first dip in the toe of like delving away from just movies, yes, and having other areas. So, all right, so that brings us to well, we have of course episode three. You know, that that lead us into episode three. Episode three is done. No more Star Wars movies, and then we hear about the Clone Wars, the yes. Clone Wars, the Clone Wars, and. That one, I was. I, what, what was your thoughts on on that? I mean, what was your anticipation? I, I was pumped. Um, for, first of all, for those of you who uh, may not remember, um, the initial movie, Star Wars, mm-hmm. the Clone Wars movie, was a theatrical release. Right, and I was. So, did and you that go was see huge. It? I did not. Uh, I, I did. Not. Uh, <laughs> I did. I went and I saw it, and I was. I was excited and at the same time kind of sad because it did not receive any kind of fanfare like yeah. like episode one, two, three. Um, so as a result, you know, you go to see it and the movie theater is like on the on the opening day and the movie theater is, you know, you know maybe 20 people in the theater. So yeah, uh, I do think that the, for the masses, it was kind of a challenge because there was... Um, you know, it, it was hard for some people to get. Like my wife, for example, loves Star Wars, goes to see all the movies with me. We'll watch Mandalorian. We're we'll looking forward to Kenobi and the other series. But when it comes to animation, uh, she's just never been that into it. And it's not, yeah. I don't, you know, it is what it is. I watch it. I'll tell her sometimes some stuff about it. If I think it's a really good episode or arc, I'll have her watch it with me. And But she just, it's hard to get past that. Some people just don't, oh, yeah. they don't, yeah. when it's not actual actors. Mm-hmm. Instead, animation. They just they it, maybe it's just it, they in their head that's for kids. I don't want to watch it, even though there's a lot of great at adult level animation, like mature themed animation out there. So, uh, but the movie came out, and you know there was some backlash that people did not like Ahsoka. There was a oh, lot yeah. of people, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think anybody had an issue with um, the the Kenobi character with Yoda. Yeah. I think people started to, right away liked the Matt Lantern voiced Anakin Skywalker. And you know what's funny? For me, even to this day, if I see a picture of Anakin, it's Matt Lantern's voice that I hear in my head. Yep. Just because we got so used to seeing, you know, through the Clone Wars series, we got so used to seeing him as Anakin that for I think for a lot of people, he became Anakin. Like... And- yeah, and uh, I agree. I totally get that. And uh, but I also loved that there was a great voice cast all the way around. I mean, James oh, yeah. Arnold Taylor, um, and D. Bradley Baker, uh, Ashley Eckstein. I mean, they just did an amazing job. Now, I do have a funny story to tell you. Um, when I went to uh, one of the Star Wars celebrations, it was Star Wars celebration right after the um, the Clone Wars had come out. Mm-hmm. And my wife, as I've mentioned, is a teacher. She teaches elementary school. And they she does a thing every year, every year, every day, 
she does like a morning announcements with her first and second graders, and we call she calls it a it's, it's like she treats it like a podcast, like like mm-hmm. what we're doing here, except it's just the audio, and it's just basically she gets some kids to announce, you know, today here are the morning announcements, here's what's on the lunch menu, that kind of thing. So I go to this uh, celebration, and at this point, all of the voice actors are there, you know, signing autographs at booths, and but they're not po- nobody knows who they are. So there's mm-hmm. no line for them. I know who they are. So I actually go up to each of them, and I actually created um, a script, and I asked them to record a bumper, like they would do for, but not for me or not for anything I was doing because I wasn't doing anything at the time, but for my wife's class, for mm-hmm. her to do her her morning podcast called the Morning Hubcast. So they were I, I, James Arnold Taylor, Matt Lanner, um, Matthew Wood, um, uh, D. Bradley Baker. Those four were there. They could not have been nicer. They could not have been more friendly. Oh, Tom Kane as well. Um, could not have been more kind. Um, were willing to do the voice, but they didn't even... Normally they say their names and then they do the voice, but they were willing to forgo the name part because it was just for elementary school. Mm-hmm. And they and they would say, this is uh, Jamie Allentown, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're listening to the Orchard Hill Morning Cupcat. And whenever my wife would put that on the the morning announcements... The, she would just rotate them out. Um, uh, James Arnold Tedder did, uh, did one for Obi Wan, one for Plo Koon. Matt Wood did Grievous and Battle Droids. Um, nice. D. Bradley Breaker did all did Captain Rex, and um, Tom Kane did uh, the announcer voice, and he did Yoda. And mm. whenever she would put these out, the kids would freak out. They would they were like, "Oh my god, Obi Wan Kenobi just did our morning announcement!" Because they all were watching Clone Wars. Yeah, so oh, course, that yeah. and that went on for years. We did that for you know five, six, seven years. Yeah. We used them, so they were so um, nice about that. So that was I just wanted to share that. It's funny because my wife became a fan of Matt Lanter through not through the Clone Wars, but through a TV series called Timeless, which we watched uh, too. Yeah, and she yeah. loved. She's like, "Oh, it's the guy that's like he was in Star Wars." <laughs> um and they go yeah. on i was also gonna say i uh i kind of had known of ashley through another way through not personally but her husband was a baseball player yes and he played for my for the cardinals for a while which is my favorite baseball team and nice. so that was always you know hey there's you know i saw i saw the name i'm like Eckstein. oh that's david Eckstein's wife awesome Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, she was a very, especially early on, a very polarizing character. And I think that's what we've talked about. Um, we did a whole series of the women of Star Wars and obviously Ahsoka is you know, one we did on. And it's always interesting. I always think it's interesting to see a character that goes from being very divisive, a lot of people hating on her to one of the most beloved characters Yep. In the Star Wars canon, but you got to um, remember, and this is like one of those things where the 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 loudest voice in the room is not necessarily the right voice. Yeah, <laughs> they're not necessarily correct, and they're not necessarily the majority. Well, just I loud. think I think it was one of those things that you had to you, you. It was a character that you had to let mature and let grow. Oh yeah, there's a reason oh, there, why she started out as this little cocky, know, uh, little cocky, arrogance. Snippy right. Snips. I, I use the nickname for, Snips. A perfect Padawan for Anakin when you think yes. about it. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, so yeah. So, that was one. Now, there really wasn't much else that there was divisive. I think they were, some people didn't like the animation style of the of the faces. They said it was based on um, Thunderbirds, the puppets, Thunderbirds yeah. show. And so, there was a very wooden um yeah. feel to the to the animation but i couldn't i'm sorry i was i was a huge fan of the animation especially mm-hmm. the, the 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 establishing far away shots and the ships and the scenery and the battles just looked yeah it was oh. it was so it close was to just epic. being being yeah it was like watching a, a live action film and yeah. and that was on the first season and then as each season progressed when they started doing more with hair movement and more with texturing and water effects and shading mm. oh my god it just got so it, it got, became yeah. beautiful you know oh. so they they had five seasons five seasons, five seasons right? on the cartoon so, network 
right? And and then of course we get into uh, the the Disney acquisition. Yeah, well, Net- Netflix got it, and then they did season six. Right, season that, six that, was a Netflix exclusive. Was for yeah. Net- was exclusive for Netflix. In in my mind, I kind of separate them as there is Clone Wars, the Clone Wars season five, one through five. Then there's Clone Wars season six. Then there's Clone Wars season seven. Yeah. So between um, Clone Wars season five and Clone Wars season six, is that where Rebels took place? Was Rebels in the middle there? Yes, but before we get to Rebels, while we're still talking about Clone Wars, absolutely. Um, we have to talk about one Dave Filoni. Oh, now. Dave Filoni, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting at a, at a Star Wars celebration. I was actually at, I remember this, this um, I, I listen regularly to Rebel Force Radio. Uh, at the time, I think it was the Force cast, and the Jason and Jimmy that are on there. And, and again, they're controversial hosts these days, and I know that. But at the time, I listened to them. I still listen to them. And uh, they actually had a party uh, at a hotel for you know, the force dot the force, uh, force cast listeners. And Dave Filoni was one of the guests and he, it wasn't like a party where you go over and take a photo with him or an autograph with him. He just sat with you and had a conversation and wow. the, and the way he talked and he would just sit with all of us. And, and, you know, and it wasn't like, you know, there were hundreds of us. It was just him talking at a table of four or five of us over here. Then he'd walk over there. So I had a conversation with the man and it just, it was so nice. And there he is to, for the, those of you who are looking, sig- the yep, chosen one. Hat. This, yes. yes. And, and, you know, learning at the feet of the master, at the feet of George Lucas, but 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 an artist, none, you know, to boot. Oh, and, yeah. And, I mean, I can't tell you how happy I am for him, how happy I am that he is kind of leading the charge, him and John mm-hmm. Favreau now in the Star Wars streaming area, but also that he still has his hand in some of the animation if that goes you, on. If you haven't watched it, there's a... Um, there's a Netflix series called The Chef Show, and it's with um, I can't think. My name's gone. Uh, he he helped create Mandalorian. Oh, John Favreau. John Favreau. Right. And he goes to Skywalker Ranch. Oh. And he's and the whole thing is that he ha- he goes to all these um, restaurants and you know goes with all these cooks and they cook they cook and they talk about there but he also brings in celebrities and he's at skywalker ranch and dave filoni comes into the kitchen and they're talking they're both cook they're all cooking and they're cooking i can't remember what they're cooking but he's talking about this new pro- project they got going the stuff they got going he realizes they're talking he's talking about the mandalorian Oh right, he's like, yeah, All we got this new that, project we got going on. And is that on Netflix? Is that on it's Netflix? on Netflix? It's called right, it's called I'll the Chef Show. Yeah, it's really good. But, it uh, but yeah, it was just so cool to hear. And he talked about getting the job and sit, literally sitting at the kitchen table with George Lucas and Lucas just spewing everything Star Wars about what this means and what this symbolizes and just Every everything fanboys dream. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, yeah. So yeah. But he, he brought his own like very, you know, um, detailed brain mm-hmm. to the table and, and his artistic skill and learning, you know, taking on the mantra that George started. Um, and it was just a great thing. So if you haven't watched the Clone Wars, we recommend it and, and and give it a chance because you know there's yeah you know there it's there are episodes some of them work in like again two three arc episode arcs and then sometimes there's just one offs here and one offs there and then some of them are very silly and and kind of questionable you might scratch your head on them but f- f- the vast majority um, really just are are amazing to watch epic mm-hmm. kind of storytelling and uh, that kind of thing so really that to me is you know, Star Wars animation arrived on the scene yes. with the with the Clone Wars, Dave Filoni Clone Wars um, well, series. Before we get to Rebel, because I want to kind of go these not necessarily in release order, but kind of in okay. chrono- 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 chronological order, kind of like we did. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so let's talk Clone Wars season seven. Oh, can we? T- oh, can we talk? Can we talk about season six first? Sure, or? sure. We can talk about season six. Yeah, because season six, um, 
you know, well, season six was a bit of a, I don't want to say a letdown, because it was not. It was it was excellent. What I mean by a letdown is that uh, between the season five ending and season six being released, there was some material, you know, like pre-visualization um, mm-hmm. video released of some of the season six, if not all of the season six um, things that they did. So when watching it, you, you know, of course, when you're watching the previous stuff, if you watch it on starwars.com or you saw it in a convention, you didn't think much, you know, you, you, you were just happy to have anything. Oh, that's, and all you say to yourself is, dang, I wish they had made that. Well, then they did. And, and they came out with it. Um, and I, I won't, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't want to, um, delve into each and every episode but the one arc that truly uh you know i was excited for and i want to mention it here because it's going to tie directly into the bad match and that is the whole fives episodes series with the with the i forget the clone's name but we had a clone during the clone wars that essentially uh order 66 kicked in Mm. too early kicked in too early and, yes. and he ended up killing his jet his jedi general and then there was a whole investigation and um the uh, the the character it was kind of told is it told through fives right was it fives yeah. and fives it was basically his he was discovering the inheritor chip that was in every clone and that was at some point in the future going to be set off about and and and, and he he discovered what it was but again, it was kind of this espionage, almost thriller mm. um, se- series of stories, and it even got Rex and Anakin involved. But it was, you know, obviously they couldn't tip their hand too soon because obviously Order sixty six would have to happen. But it was really great storytelling, and yeah. uh, just and and it really does kind of make you feel like you know it got us all that more because so many people wanted to find out about Order sixty six and like what what was that, and especially when you watch the Clone Wars. Every episode of the Clone Wars, and you see, you're watching and you're seeing these clones be humanized. They have mm-hmm. names, they have nicknames, they have different personalities, and you start to feel for these guys. Yeah. And then you and then you start to get like in the back of your mind, you're like, "Oh my God, Order sixty six is going to happen. What's going to happen to all these clones? Mm-hmm. And you know, what's going to happen to Rex? What's going to happen to we? You know, we know what happens to uh, Cody, or at least what happened. What, what you know, Cody went along with. And, and so it was crazy, but that episode, that set of episodes, just kind of delving into Order sixty six was incredible. And then yeah. fast forward a few um, years later, and now we have a Clone Wars season seven, which was even more exciting because these were not really yeah. um, not well, not as many. This, re- is, re- this is one for a long for a while. We didn't know if we were going to get more Clone Wars. No, because when Disney bought Lucasfilm, they shut down they shut down Clone Wars. So we thought yeah. because Clone Wars ran at a loss. I don't know if people yeah. know that it was so expensive to run that it, you know, Lucas was just putting his own money into it, and he just find, needed to find somebody to distribute it. But he was paying for it, and of course, when Disney took it over, they're like, "Well, we're just hemorrhaging money here, so we're not going to do that." But but then they did come back, and I got to give them credit for that. I don't know if that was Favreau and Filoni kind of, you know, pushing the envelope there, but. It was good that they did, and I love the image you have up right now with the oh the, clo- with the clones yeah. the, the, the taking on promotional the first promote promotional picture that we got with the um when they did the um official announcement at was it celebration one of them yeah one of the celebrations with the the Clone Wars returns and it was to me it was also good because it brought closure to the Clone Wars. Oh, like we absolutely! Finally, had that tie-in. We finally had, you know, and the, yeah, you know, and you you saw a little bit of an arc with Ahsoka, with uh, mm-hmm. you know, with with you know her life going on. You saw uh, Return of Maul. Um, you kind of helps connect the dots between this and then what eventually, I guess, would it, where Maul would end up with Crimson Dawn. Yeah. You find. What happened with Order sixty six, and it answers the question, and it was told really, really well. Um, yeah. But so, so yeah, I I feel like Clone Wars season seven was an excellent way, and it tied right in to episode three, um, mm-hmm. and I and I and I even brought Vader back at the end. I, oh. I just and there were so many, and there were so many like, especially that those that last arc they did the siege of Mandalore. Yes. The Siege of Mandalore. Oh. Unbelievable. I but, mean the 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 imagery and and they had so many tie-ins and so many things that you're just like, 
Oh, like uh, one thing that I, I I always I thought was really interesting is in the Bad Batch arc, which is the first first arc. The introduction of the Bad Batch, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah, the first one where Anakin is talking with Padme, and he walks out, and Obi Wan makes the quip of "Tell Padme I said hi." And you're just like. He knows. Of course, he knows. He like he know, which goes along with a the the deleted scene in episode three where he said that he'd always known, but he just did it. He learned along because it made Anakin happy, and he knew. And of course, then there was, there was some stuff with Ahsoka and Padme. Although I can't remember that might have been not have been seven, but season seven. But just just a gut wrenching. You know, again, oh. not for kids. I mean, that whole oh, thing, no. that, the whole thing with the whole crashing ship and all the clones being buried and. I, yeah. I mean, just and but 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 then to see how Rex kind of survived it, but he didn't survive it right away. It was a, it was a yeah, it was a challenge, you know. And so that, and that was, I mean, just hearing and then I thought it was a neat little trick of when when Ahsoka feels what's going on and you hear the voices in the back. The fact that they used the actual episode three, yes, audio ah. uh, was just so. It, it just gave it a legitimacy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, so that every, was and everything in the tie ends to what's going on in the movie. The fact that the when you, when they're sit, when they walk in and they're watching the conference between all the the Jedi masters, and you realize that's straight from Episode Three again. Yep. Straight from Episode Three, mm-hmm. and and you can see it from a different angle. It, you know, it, just, yeah, just and, fantastic. And it, like all the little things and. And you know. oh, and, and even post Disney acquisition, absolutely zero reduction in quality of oh, the animation even more, style even, and the coloring. Not, even much, even even if anything, it was better. Yes, um, they much, much. they impro- they improved it, which is yeah. just all right. So then, so not in this order, but you know, after Clone Wars, the first round, um, Dave Filoni moves on with Star Wars Rebels, mm-hmm. which was um, a, a unique take. Now. Definitely skewed slightly younger than at least the first season. I'd say at least the first season. By the yeah, time I think the first season on, it did get pretty, pretty. I don't want to say dark, but it pretty it did get pretty mature. Yeah, and um, it, co- it, it took. Of course, it takes place about what it was about five years prior to episode it, four. I knew it, uh, it takes place. I believe. I think it starts because it ends. Because I believe well, it kind of ends after, like yeah. Because um, if I rem- yeah yeah in fact in fact it's five years re- yeah because um what's his, um uh the, 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 the Ezra is the same age as Luke right because they're both right, so. born on the anniversary of the Empire Day right yeah well, anyway so so. You have this great new new group of characters, and mm-hmm. unlike uh, unlike Clone Wars, where you know you know yes, there are some new characters, but you you also have Obi Wan to anchor it, you have Anakin to anchor it, you have Yoda to anchor it. So uh, there's a lot of familiarity. But when it came mm-hmm. to this one, it w- there was far less. You had a whole new team of people that were kind of becoming the birth of the rebellion, and mm-hmm. you know it took place on a new planet, Lothal. Um, and again, it started off a little more juvenile. But then started to kind of pick up in maturity, and of course, um, we have the. Ret- then we do start seeing some with with Dave Filoni involved. You know that we're going to start seeing some familiar faces. Ahsoka, yeah, finds that you know it c- c- it comes into the picture, um, and that, that's important because you don't know what happened to Ahsoka. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? At the end, you don't know how what her fate is. And then, yeah. of course, Captain Rex and a few other clones are. All because they age twice as fast. They're all old men, kind of heavy set, retired on this other planet. I thought that was fantastic. And yeah. how cool was it? Again, spoilers if you haven't seen it. But they, I don't know if they come right out and say it, but if you watch Return of the Jedi and you watch they have, the Endor they scene. Have confirmed it. They have confirmed okay. it. It's been confirmed by Lucas that the yeah, soldier, so, they, it was kind of retconning. Yeah, there was a soldier. There was an actor in Return of the Jedi that um, was part of the uh, Rebel team that was down on Endor, and he was a yeah. kind of an older man with a mustache and a beard, white mustache, kind of looked like a Santa Claus. And 
you know, he was just, he was just, he, you know, we, people remember seeing him and it was, he kind of stuck out. He was in a lot of promotional videos. So there he was. And they actually made Rex retroly, retroactively. They made Rex that character, which we thought was fantastic just because we just ni- nice to know that Rex has, you know, become part of the Rebel Alliance and he's, he's, you know, cause we all liked him. You know what I mean? He was like one of the most likable clones of anybody. He was all loyal. He was loyal to Anakin and everybody didn't know what was going to happen, but he ended up not, yeah, there he is. He ended up not, um, not betraying, you know, he didn't, he didn't follow Anakin, but he didn't, you know, he didn't, uh, turn on any of the Jedi, you know, so, and he became, and he ended up becoming a rebel. So that's mm-hmm. really, really cool. So and, what was your opinion on the whole idea? And we've talked about this, you know, the first season of Cut a Kitty, one of the criticisms, especially with the character of Ezra was he got the nickname of space Aladdin. Um, I, I, I never really, I, I, yeah. I never really subscribed to that. You know, I just, yeah. I understand. Oh, one thing uh, I think they did really good with one character was how they portrayed Vader. Mm-hmm. And well, it was me, also great to hear James Earl Jones return yes. as the voice. So that was um, cool. You know, the almost the less is more. You oh, know, yeah. I always kind of v- envisioned Vader during this period as being the boogeyman. Of the, well, yeah, of the and galaxy. Vader, this this is not Vader's story. I mean, Vader had yeah. his own. He has, he has nine movies to tell his story, plus a lot yeah. of uh, a lot of the Clone Wars. So it was good to see to have him only be used sparingly. And what he was, he was used very well. What? Yes. And very. I mean, that first that first episode where where they you know, they encounter Vader, and um, Ezra is talking to Kanan, and you know, basically asking, him, "What was that?" And he tells him that was the Sith Lord. And then yep. yeah, I think he says something to the effect of, well, how do we defeat them? And he's like, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> we, nope. This is beyond my pay grade. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, and, and, and yeah. The, the fight between, and, and, the, and the banter oh. between Vader and, the, the, my favorite was Vader and Ahsoka with Vader getting his mask cut off. Half and of then it. you hear the combination of the voice of Matt Lanter oh. with, see, oh, and that, oh, that so, line so of, good. Where where she says uh, I won't leave you, and Vader replies with, "Then you will." Be- yep. Oop. Then you will die. <laughs> yeah. So, and anybody who anybody who makes the joke, you know, says that, you know, um, I believe somebody comment about, you know, Vader not being, you know, not being about drama, the drama queen. I was like, okay, you're talking about a guy who used the Force to lift up a Tie Fighter while in a in a cave with no wind. Use the force to make his cape fly dramatically in the wind. He's all about presence. He's it's all, all about showmanship. That's right. He's like the Liberace of the of the Empire, you know. Yes, He's gonna come right. up with the glitz. <laughs> yeah. Only to not to make people go, ooh, but to make people scream in terror. But that's all right. Yeah. Um I also got a, a shout out. I do I did I I'm gonna say one thing I you know I enjoyed and one thing that I was slightly questioning. I enjoy the character of Sabine. A lot of people were mm-hmm. like kind of iffy about Sabine. I think oh, part okay. of it though is it's a personal connection because uh, she was the first Star Wars artist. You know yes. what I mean? And I have, having a daughter who's an artist who actually you know cosplayed as Sabine a few times. Um, you know, just, she kind of looks like her. She's a little short, but she kind of looks like Sabine a little bit with the short hair. And uh, I thought that was great. And I thought every season she had different hair color. I said, this is so mm-hmm. what what um you know a, an artist would be like in the star wars universe and and i thought it was it was great the uh, one thing that i was a little bit i kind of kind of you know was a little he- hesitant on was that whole world between worlds or whatever mm. i i feel like uh that's a that's a trope that i, I don't really want to have a star wars multiverse you know what yeah. i mean but I, and i knew i do realize that that's kind of how they were able to pull ahsoka back and yeah. i get that but I, I hope that they well, don't. Well, I mean, you, time, I hope... time travel can always, you know, it's one of those, like you said, uh, uh, overused trope. And really, you know, to use a industry term, it's kind of a uh, deus ex, ex machina yeah. type of a thing. You know, it's just like, how are they going to get out of this situation? Oh, time travel. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, love time travel. Back to yeah. the Future is one of my favorite, you know, yeah. franchises next to Star Wars. And I love Star Trek. I love the, the, the all the tons of time travel. They just, I just don't want to have it be overdone. And, and, yeah. and, and also, and I just... Be, and to be used as a 
a get out of jail free card. Right. I think there needs thing. to there needs to continue to be weight to a character when a character dies. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there needs to be weight to it, and um, I don't think that we should. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mind. Like you know, I. I was okay with with the Han Solo character dying in Force Awakens, and I was okay with him coming back as a memory in Rise of Skywalker, and I was okay with a different actor playing Solo for the Solo a Star Wars story movie. Yeah, well, uh, because, me, but that's not me. time travel. That's that's really a, yeah. a, a, well, a point in time where there's a movie where the story is being told. That's and all. for me, I think you know if you do do a, a series or a movie where time travel is a way of changing things and getting out of a situation that as you go forward, if you're going to keep forward, there has to be ramifications to that. Yes. So the MCU is a perfect example. You know, they use time travel in the MCU to undo, you know, to, to bring everyone back and to get everything and to change everything. Well, now as you look at the Loki series, uh, the new Spider-Man movie coming out, we're seeing, the ramifications right. of what exactly. happened when you do that. That and yeah. and we didn't walk out of it unscathed. I mean, there were characters that literally died and are not come or, or or went away and are not coming back. Yeah. So, um, but I just feel like you know I hope that they and they don't seem to have been dealing too much with it. So as a as a one off, I was fine yeah. with it, and I hope it stays that way. The so one but, thing uh, that Rebels did do is they were the show that bridged the gap between the legends and the new canon. By bringing being the first fit, first really to bring forward one of the legends characters, of course, I'm talking about Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yes, yes, I was I, I wasn't knowing where you were going there in a minute. I was like, what? I was like, oh yeah, that's right, Grand Admiral Thrawn, yeah. uh, and that was great and beautifully played, um, yeah. beautifully beautifully voiced by was it Mendelssohn? Mendelssohn, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Which and- if uh, I I'll go on record right now, if they do do, I know some people have said. Ben uh, Cumberbatch to uh, to be a, a, a live action Thrawn. I think I think Mendelssohn would be a perfect. Was it Ben Thrawn. Mendelssohn or was it was there another one? Oh wait, am I am I thinking of is it Mendelssohn There's or two. Mickelson? Mickelson. Or am I thinking Mickelson, not Mendelssohn? Mickel, Mickelson. 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 Sorry, Mendelssohn is from Krennic. My bad. Krennic. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I I thought that was brilliant casting, and uh, and I was I was let happy with that. I was let happy. me make sure just to be sure. I don't want to oh, are say we, that uh, I stand wrong. Lars Mickelson, yes. Yes, okay, I know. Not Mads Mickels, but Lars. All right, so, so you know, yay on Rebels. And the way it ended was, like, kind of wrapping a lot of other things up and uh, kind of showing they, did, they, they weren't afraid to to lose a few characters and uh, along the way. So, And they left some things questionable. And I think we'll find out. We will eventually find out and see a return of Ezra in some form or capacity, but Probably. now before I mean, we get guessing, to, oh, um, sorry, are you guessing, go ahead. Are you thinking that we'll see see him in the Ahsoka series? Um, maybe. Or do you think we'll see him before? I think if we're going to see him anywhere, it'll probably be the Ahsoka series. Yeah, I think we'll see him. I think we'll see Sabine in the Ahsoka series. Mm-hmm. So um, we'll see, and I think we might see uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn, but we'll uh, see. That, yeah, yeah. All right. So before we get to the final one i, I want to mention a few kind of shorter ones that are part of the and they're part of animation history we have the star wars galaxy of adventures have you seen these uh um, these, not these are essentially you can find them on starwarskids.com they're not they're shorts they're, i mean and i mean really short they're like a minute long hmm. but they're really really well done they're essentially i would say that the the animation style is similar to kind of a Japanese animation, but not quite so so Japanese animation. It's just kind of a softer, but a Japanese style animation. And they basically what they did is they brought this out, I believe, to kind of get young children kind of excited about the whole Star Wars saga. You know, prior to the the um, Last Jedi and or the Rise of Skywalker coming out. And they were just short minutes talking about different characters and they tied into their whole lives like Princess Leia and you know Luke Skywalker, Finn, Rey. I mean, there was stuff all over the place. It went all over from the prequels through the sequels. It was really cool what they did. And what was neat about it was that the sound effects and the voices were all from the movies. 
You know, you didn't, you know, so they were telling like little short snippets of stuff, like when they were on Bespin or when, you know, when they were, or when they were in Jakku or where they were on Dagobah or whatever. So that was a really cool thing. If you get a chance, if you go to Star Wars Kids on YouTube, I think you can find them there or just type in Galaxy of Adventures. I think, and, yeah, I have watched, yes, I have. I think I have, yeah. now that you mentioned it, I've watched those. Now, another one that they did, which was kind of a tie in um, for, um, uh, for like a toy line was yeah. forces of destiny. Yes. And this was more obvious. This was geared more towards the, speaking of the women of star Wars, they were basically all adventures, these short adventures taught, you know, with all the different female characters. And it was tied into a kind of a, a, a toy doll line and yeah. a few other things, but it, they were really well done. And they oftentimes mm -hmm. brought in all the voice actors from the originals to do it. So, uh, and they went all, again, went the gambit between, you know, and they, and they crossed over, you know, there were, there were things with, um, with Jin, Urso, uh, and, and also, you know, Hondo Onaka was in one of them from, yeah. from Galaxy. Yeah. It, it was a pretty cool, uh, thing. So I recommend those two. And then the third one, actually four, there's four. The third one was, um, anything it's it, it related to Lego. The Star Wars yeah. Lego brand has put together a beautiful amount of Star Wars content. Obviously, mm -hmm. the, the, the toys themselves are the brick, the building sets are great, but they've had video games and the video games have been great. Well, they've crossed over into into all. There's been mm -hmm. too many to mention between the holiday special last year, the Freemaker Adventures, which had a whole new series of, of of characters kind of interacting with them, and obviously not canon, just kind of tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, you know, fun and humorous, but still a lot of fun. And um, and if you get a chance to watch them, and then let's talk about the black sheep of the room, Star Wars Resistance. Resistance. <laughs> um, now I say black sheep. I I did not mind Star Wars Resistance, no. but if Star Wars Rebels was geared towards young kids, Star Wars Resistance was geared towards like infants. <laughs> Yeah, I call it the Teletubbies of the Star Wars. Yeah, it was it was geared toward like this is something that. You know, my little my 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 daughter would have would be would be watching. Although she likes rebels, um, she's she right. likes, she really likes lot rebels. Um, I and I tell you what, one of the things that um, I, I enjoyed about that show was well, I did like I liked its connection to Force Awakens and Last Jedi with you know the way they were kind of telling the story. And how it kind of was parallel. I like that it was not meant... I don't think they ever intended it for it to be more than two seasons. Maybe three if they really thought they could squeeze a third out. But I think it was meant to just be something that was running parallel. Yeah. And I also liked the animation style, which was 2D, but sort of with a 3D feel. I mean, I don't yeah. know how else to describe it. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And I enjoyed um, some of the... I mean, the characters, they, they were just very... Very slapsticky, you know. Very goofy. Yeah. Kaz was just like oh, 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 lady, yeah, like Jerry Lewis falling over himself. So yeah, but but it was for what it was, you know. So it was it was fine. Before we move on to Bad Batch and beyond, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about sort of the 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 ones that weren't necessarily Star Wars. They were Star Wars, but they weren't part of. They were done by other people, like for instance the um, the uh, Blue Harvest series uh, from Family Guy. Oh yes, the yes. Uh, uh, the Robot Chicken Star Wars skits, um, which were hilarious. I mean that whole that whole scene with the uh, the Emperor uh, talking on the phone to Vader. What the like, heck's an aluminum falcon? <laughs> yes, or or there's one where he calls he calls up. He's like, yeah, I just remembered that the Jedi had this thing called younglings. Uh, we can just bring them back, you know. We can re-educate. You did what? So... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I enjoyed that. I thought the humor, um, I mean, was a, obviously irreverent, um, but 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 still like belly laugh yeah. funny, uh, uh, especially uh, something, family. Something 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 dark, something dark side. Dark side. <laughs> yes, I mean, or blue harvest, and 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 just um, really. I loved how in each of the three movies that they parodied on Family Guy, poor Meg. Meg only got like you know she was what she was the Dianoga in the first one. Yeah, she was uh, she was the 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 the, uh, the space slug in the second one. And I well, forget. I what appreciated she was. what you could tell. 
that in both instances, both Seth Green being involved in both of them, both of them um, as voices and create, you can tell that they weren't making fun of them. Oh no, there was a there was a rever like you could tell these yeah. were fans. Oh, it yeah. wasn't just like oh we're making fun of this. You know, there was a there was a sort of almost a reverence to it. This I like, think. My favorite, I don't know why, but I just love the part where after they blow up the first, the Death Star blows up Alderaan, you see the two guards on the, on the, on, you know, the ones that are like there when the green thing comes in and they're like, so I said, I, I forget their names, but I said, so I said, no, forget healthcare, you know, forget more pay. I just want a railing. <laughs> they yeah. did, and they said, no, because we'd be leaning all day. And then... And I just thought, oh my god, that's that's classic. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a, it's a special type of humor that you only will get if you are the kind of person that has watched these movies yeah. hundreds of times, yeah. and and you just pick out all these little things, you know. So yes, um, definitely now, not part of Star Wars canon or universe. But there is one character, not not to kind of cross branches, but um, if you if you if you're reading the comics, especially you know any of the you know pre Disney comics or even after they were there was a there was a there are two characters that were, that were comic characters called Let me guess Tag, Tag and Bink. Bink. Yes. I have wanted them to be brought back in. I love Tag of, and Bink. Because if those of you who don't know there were two Imperial Stormtroopers who were the most inept I mean just complete inept buffoons. But they were always happened to be at the pinnacle of every single thing that was I think happening my favorite was they were the two royal guards right in return of the jedi and then yeah. they when they say guard when emperor says guards leave us they they walk around the back and then they realize that there's no door there <laughs> so they're like what do we do i can't go back around <laughs> so yeah i love that and there was, um, like some people some people have speculated you know wanted them to be the two scout troopers in the yes. Mandalorian. I don't my... want that. I don't want that because they were mean. Yeah, <laughs> they were they were beaten up on ba poor poor baby That's Grogu. Right. No, That's right. I don't want. I think they they're, they're supposed to be harmless. Yeah. So I I would I I would rather them show up as like inept bounty hunters that mm -hmm. are wanting that want to that. They need help, and they come to Mando or something. If they did something, that would be more their speed. But. Yeah. So all right. So. so finally, we get to the latest animated series we've had, which is just ended not actually not that long ago. No, just a week or two ago, right? Uh, with the Bad Batch. Now, let me ask you this: Do you all do you consider the Bad Batch to be? In, do you look at it as something completely separate from the Clone Wars, or you consider it to be almost like a Clone Wars season eight? I see it as Clone Wars spinoff. Clone That's Wars kind spinoff. of what I would say. Yeah, so I it's definitely that. because it's. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a whole new set of characters, and they were yeah. introduced in the Clone Wars. So that was kind of a backdoor pilot, you know. Something for those that don't yeah. know, uh, instead of sometimes what what series will do is they'll, and this goes for cartoon series it goes for regular series that they'll have a instead of ha they'll have a pilot sometimes you'll shoot a pilot which is like a sample show and mm -hmm. then and, and then maybe they'll maybe the studios will pick it up and air it and then if they pick it up then then the show continues but sometimes they do what's called a backdoor pilot which in it, it'll be uh, a pilot that is essentially a um it'll you know, it'll be kind of shoved into another show so there'll be a show for example i mean one of the king of backdoor pilots was happy days if you've ever watched Happy Days, um, with you know the Fonz and Richie Cunningham and everything, uh, that was out in the seventies. Well, there have been so many shows that spun off from that, like Laverne and Shirley, like Mork and Mindy, like a, a few other ones that that only lasted. Joni you know, and Chotz. Joni and yeah, Joni loves Chotzi or whatever. Well, these were all you know they they give them moments in Happy Days and scenes and and episodes that were that they would do some stuff there. And those mm -hmm. were kind of considered backdoor pilots. Well, I think that the bad batch, since they were introduced in the clone wars as a, with their own story, you know, st a, a story arc, I think that, you know, they eventually became their own series. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but what I, I thought that they did an amazing job with that. I thought that they further, you know, uh, answered a lot of questions about order 66 and the, but from the Kem Kem Owen point of view, and it made you feel. It made you really feel for the clones, oh, and yeah. and see things really start to take a turn that even the clones weren't prepared for. 
Yeah, you and know? it answered a lot of questions. It you know, you know, tied a lot of lot of loose ends and really set the stage for the rise of the empire. And you see how everything kind of melds together and everything kind of you know coalesces. You can see like, oh, so that's how they did it. You know, yeah, and like it's things a- you hear mentioned, like you hear. You know, the Mandalorian, you hear chain codes mentioned. And you're like, what's chain code? Right. And then they kind of start. Yes. Oh, okay. It's it's just an example of, and you know, the Lucasfilm has their story group. And you know that this is one of these things that they're trying to keep streamlined. At least, I mean, you know, like when you consider all the books, when you consider all the comic books, when you consider video games, it's impossible to keep everything 100% aligned without there being a few you know skewed moments but when it comes to the tv you know uh live action tv animation and films um they're doing a really 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 strong yeah. st- a good job of it so and uh so you enjoyed the bad batch though i did very much uh getting uh, excited for season two yep. and before i'm gonna hopefully this works i'm gonna try something because i want us to um together kind of watch and i haven't actually had a chance to watch this yet so this will be my first time watching this uh the teaser trailer for star wars visions um oh, absolutely not had a chance to actually Star Wars Visions is going to be an exciting anime anthology series coming to Disney Plus in September. Japanese animation inspired a lot of the people at Lucasfilm over the years. We loved the idea of seeing Star Wars expressed in that way. Each one of these studios that we approached, we found hardcore Star Wars fans. They all had a story they wanted to tell. We were looking for something from the heart and soul of the individual creators. They are their visions through the lens of Star Wars. There are so many genres at play, big and bold, romantic and sweeping. Funny. For those listening, they're doing, uh, yeah, just, yeah, just showing a lot of images, like concept yeah. art. And we'll put this up on the YouTube page, too. Um, talk about that here later as we close. You can find uh, this on uh, probably on StarWars.com, but if you just look, start, yeah. type in Star Wars Vision in YouTube, you'll find a couple of uh, yeah. previews. We try to have some retro vintage feeling. We couldn't skip the Astro Boy influence. People love Astro Boy. <laughs> Astro Boy. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm fascinated by just the way they put the, put the animation together now. Yeah. I love they have some having um, lightsabers that truly look like samurai swords. Yeah. We feel so fortunate to be working with these filmmakers. There are so many opportunities to reflect Japanese storytelling in a Star Wars universe. Star Wars Visions is completely different than everything else in Star Wars storytelling. Audiences will fall in love with it. Cool stuff, really. Very cool, yeah. So about 10, 10 different episodes, I think, eight or nine or 10. Looks like it, yeah. yeah. Wow, that was. I, I think, I don't, let's not do it right now, but I think if you look, there might have been a newer one where they actually show some more mm. imagery, like not just images, but motion, you know, some actual stuff. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. And um, I think I, I'm, I'm definitely more interested in this from an artistic standpoint. 
Um, I'm sure that in terms of story, I, I mean, they, they're they're going to, I would imagine it's going to all be kind of legendary status. Maybe yeah. not. I could be wrong. I could yeah, be wrong. well, I, th- I think it's almost like they just told these, you know, these animate, these Japanese animation studios, you know, just what I saw, have fun. Just yep, that's it. Like, you knock do. yourself out. Do what do you do. Do what you do. Um, um, before... There's yeah, I, I I'm very much excited about. It. Now other projects that are coming up. There, I think there's a, a droid story. I think that's there's another one. I, that yeah. was another one I believe was going to be animated, and I'm not sure about the rest of the ones. I, I mean, I mean, I'm, I know we have getting another Bad Batch. Um, I don't know if uh, there are other plans in the works for that. I do want to talk about before we leave Bad Batch. I, I just want to put a shout out to D Bradley D Bradley Baker. No, sorry, mm-hmm. yeah, D Bradley Baker for um what he does on that show. If he does not get an Emmy nod, you know, daytime Emmy or children's, I don't care what, whatever kind of one he would fit in. There's just, I'm done. Well, I've already been done with awards because I feel like, you know, Star Wars gets, you know, knocked a lot of times, but I really do feel he deserves something because he just, you know, you can watch that show and you never lose sight of the fact that you have five different characters and it's all one voice. You know, he does an amazing job. So, um, but I also want to talk about real briefly before we wrap up, uh, Star Wars Detours. Have you heard of remember Detours? Uh, sounds familiar. Okay. So before there was a time when, when uh, Lucasfilm was bought by Disney, uh, George Lucas got together with Seth Green, you mentioned earlier, and me and another a few other creators and put together what is essentially a Star Wars animated you know anthology comedy series Mm -hmm. and they wrote some scripts and they put together i think robot chicken slash family guy star wars that style of humor but set in the star wars universe with different characters um i mean all the characters you know and they made a script and they they did have they did 3D style animation, and they have, if I'm not mistaken, 30 or even 60 episodes done, done, wow, done. They're complete. They are ready to go. And then Disney sold or Disney bought Lucasfilm, and now Disney's looking at this, and Lucasfilm's looking at this thing that this fun, you know, it's like George Lucas sitting in his back barn with Seth Green, like, making movies on their own. I mean, it was that kind of level of it. And now they don't know what to do with it, because it's, you know, obviously the integrity of Star Wars characters are important, and they don't know if they want to throw this out there right now. So, I wonder if that will ever be in, you know, be seen. I'm sure it will. That's too much content. It's It's just too much content to let it be not released. If it's not a Disney Plus thing, I mean, I'm sure it'll end up being something on Disney Plus eventually because it's just it's too good to do. Now they might have, they also might have not released it because they might not it might not be funny. I saw the trailer for it years ago. You can find it if you type test Star Wars Detours, you'll get the trailer, and it's it's funny. I mean, you know, they have some funny moments, but it's now, also okay. could it be the fact that I mean, with Seth Green, you know, Seth Green, it can be a little you know blue. Does it skew more towards that? Because that be the one of the reasons why Disney. I, maybe, is. but I don't. I don't think it's it's at least based on the previews. It did not look as as blue or as uh, iffy as certainly not like Robot Chicken, and yeah. not even as bad as Friendly Family Guy. It was definitely more um, tame than that. At least the preview okay. was. So okay. who knows? But we'll see. I, but that. But keep your eyes open. That there's no, there's no announcement. Pe- people keep interviewing Seth Green. It's it, the thing about it. Mark is that it was it was done. They made it. It wasn't even like they have an idea. And it's like when it came to the, when George Lucas was looking at a TV series, he had scripts, and the scripts are sitting on a shelf. That's what he would say. This wasn't scripts. This was fully fully animated, voiced sound and music done. Wow. And um and 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 I think it was sixty episodes. So yeah. I don't know how long the episodes are, but but again, so. Who knows? Wow. But um, so so there's been no shortage of Disney. Sorry, Star Wars animation. Um, no, thanks in no small part to Disney over the last few years. But um, but I'm you know there's been a pretty rich history there. Is there anything we is there anything we missed? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I think we I think covered we pretty much. Yeah, 
we cover. I mean, I'm sure there might have been stuff with like commercials, and some people would talk about like if there's anything with moving comics or anything like that. But I mean, or, or and of course, you can argue video games. Yeah. Um, you know, like the 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 the, the story elements the cut the, what do they call them the cut, cut scenes. scenes yeah i'm not a gamer so forgive me but the cut scenes i mean there you can go on youtube and find every video game just the cut scenes put together and it almost you know comes out like an animated movie so um there, there's been no shortage of it so yeah. and i'm sure that it will continue for a long long time so. yep well i think that's a good place to wrap things up for the night so uh, before we get going, Will, why don't you, they, you tell the people where they can find you at? Okay. Well, you can email me at DarthTuba77 at gmail.com. I have a Darth Tuba channel on YouTube that is basically for about Star Wars collecting and unboxing. And as I said, we have an, an episode that just dropped today at the, time, the day of this recording, which is September 2nd, because I had a, with the with the flood from the remnants of, of Hurricane Ida, uh, some of my Star Wars uh, collection uh, boxes got damaged and wet so i had to quickly unbox them and i said well i might as well film it so you can see that and i have episodes coming every wednesday and sunday on regular schedule so hope you can see, see to see you there check me out on twitter instagram at darth tuba darth tuba star wars unboxing page on facebook awesome thank you awesome uh well as for us um we are going to be reopening our youtube channel here pretty soon we do have one uh it's been kind of quiet recently but uh, now that we're back on StreamYard and have a few more tools we can we can play with, uh, just search War of the Stars and you'll be able to find us there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you want to contact the show, uh, best way to do it, right there, War of the Stars 1 at gmail.com. That is the best way to get a hold of us. You can also find us at War of the, at War of the Stars 1 on Twitter. And Facebook, War of the Stars. Uh, just search War of the Stars on Facebook for the Facebook group. Uh, if you want to support the show, uh, a couple ways you can do that. Obviously, you can buy merch. Right there is the link to how to get a hold of us to buy the merchandise. Spreadshirt.com forward slash shop forward slash War of the Stars. Or you can just go to Patreon patreon.com forward slash war of the stars you can also hear us each and every week on your wherever you find your podcast stitcher stitcher spotify radio cast um pretty much anywhere like i said anywhere you find you listen to your fine podcast check us out there Awesome. Uh, that will do it for this week. Next week, I think we're going to have a little fun, something we we like to do every once in a while here on War of the Stars in conjunction with what Marvel is doing with their What If series. I think we do a little bit of a What If. Oh, that sounds and fun. And look down the uh, kind of the What If of the Star Wars universe. So until then, remember, this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is is our Star Wars. May the Force be with you. Rising moons, everyone. <laughs>